Welcome to Pharmacy Operation Basics. I'm Joey Mattingly. Today we're going to be talking about the angry customer. Unhappy customers are inevitable in any pharmacy practice. Sometimes the patient's unhappy with the pharmacy. Sometimes the patient, some, sometimes the patient's unhappy for other reasons. And sometimes both can be true. Today's learning objectives are to explain how customer expectations impact the customer's response to the service level. We also want to be able to discuss a common mismatch between a pharmacy employee's expectation and a pharmacy customer's expectation. And finally, we want to develop strategies to enable your pharmacy staff to meet customer expectations more frequently. So first, let's talk about customer expectations. Providing excellent service requires understanding what the customer expects. Customers judge service by comparing perceptions and experiences with their predetermined expectations. So managing those expectations is just as important as the service provided. Research shows that with, in terms of customer expectations, there are really two levels of service expectations. There's adequate and there's a desired. Desired service is what the customer believes it can or should be, whereas adequate levels is what the customer finds is acceptable. And in between, we have sort of this tolerated zone or zone of tolerance that, that as long as your service level falls between, you know, w above what is adequate uh, and, and, it, and, and somewhere between adequate and that desired uh, ideal service, that's going to be the period or the point where the customer thinks, uh, yeah, they met what, what I expected. More experienced customers are likely to have higher expectations. So you think about that desired service may creep up and up and up. The number of perceived alternatives may change that zone of tolerance as well. So if, if you know you've got 18 different places you can get a service, you know that you're, you're, it's easy for you to leave. And you're going to say, look, if I don't get good service, I'm going to go down the street to this other place, right? And also when the situation is urgent, the customer may have even higher expectations. So knowing when that desired service just goes above and, above and beyond versus, or continues to go up on the high side. So how do we manage expectations? The first piece of advice is to be fair. Take time to explain pharmacy policies and demonstrate to the customer that you're being fair by allowing you know two-way communication. Let them share their feelings with you as well. What do they expect? What do they what do they perceive as, as the issue? If they think that you're just back there counting pills, uh, and, and again, that's a common uh, mis misconception with pharmacies, uh, you know, why wouldn't the customer expect you to, to, to do something quickly? Because all you're doing is putting pills from the big bottle to the little bottle, right? How do we do a better job demonstrating what we're, you know, what we're doing and being transparent? The second piece is to be reliable. Let's build uh, trust through consistency. You know, let's, let's try to meet uh, whatever that service level is frequently. Customers also learn what to expect. So you know, over time, you know, they, they sort of start understanding what your, uh, what your time is going to be like, what your service typically is. And so they also sort of become used to, you know, that, a certain level as well. Be very careful with promises. So when you advertise that's going to be a 15 minute wait on every prescription. Okay, so what if your average wait time is 15 minutes? That means there are some prescriptions that are going to get done in 10 minutes and some that are going to take 20, 30, 40 minutes because what happens is is a lot of farm a lot of prescriptions are relatively straightforward. Maybe it's just a refill, maybe you're you really are just you know taking something off the shelf, labeling it double checking it, you know, making sure it's the right thing and, and, and letting it get out the door. Those can take just a few minutes, but we also have prescriptions where they're, they just get complicated. Uh, you know, maybe there's an issue that we got to call the doctor. Maybe there's an issue with it's out of refills, whatever it may be. There's a lot of issues that can keep a prescription from being a 15 minute prescription. So if a patient hands off five prescriptions, do they expect all five to be done in 15? Um, is it, you know, is that, is that the expectation? And, and so I guess needing to understand, like, uh, what if four of the five uh, get done in 15 and one doesn't? Did we fail to meet that promise? So really, you know, what does our advertising um, look like and how do we market ourselves? 
you know, some companies under promise to kind of set those expectation lo- uh, expectations lower. You know, you think of here about under promise and over deliver, right? Um, but this may also hurt your competitive appeal in a market like retail pharmacy. Like, who wants to hear that? You know, hey, you can go to this pharmacy. The service is going to be pretty bad, but you know, what's the trade off, right? So I, I think you just got to be careful, like in terms of under promising what you can do. You need to value your service process, okay? Customers expect great outcomes, but they really appreciate how the outcome's achieved as well. And and that I just mean by good communication and friendliness. Try to be someone that's helpful. You know, try to be someone that is doing everything that you can, or at least from the appearance standpoint, the customer feels like you're doing everything that you can because you're communicating and saying, you know, good and bad, good, bad, or ugly, you're going to tell them how it is. Build relationships. Strong relationships create a goodwill buffer, and by that I mean, you know, when you when you build loyalty, uh, or when you when you really, over time, you've you've been reliable, you've been fair, you've been open, you've been honest. The customers know what to expect. You go from being the pharmacist. You know, this was something I always loved. I I loved it when. I, I sort of transformed at some point in my relationship with a customer from being the pharmacist to being Joey. And they were just like, oh, I would talk to Joey. Joey said this. And then and they just referred to me by name because we had that kind of connection. And, you know, and, and it was one of those things uh, that, that um, I knew with that customer, if anything failed, if there was ever a lapse in our service, because there certainly were, bad things ha- c- can happen. Um, I know that I could reach out to that customer, apologize for whatever happened, explain, you know, what the issue was, promise it, you know, we'll, we'll do better next time, whether it was, or offer, you know, if, if there's anything I could offer. You know, that sort of thing allows them to know that you really value them. It starts building that loyalty. It really helps your marketing. Um, and that was one of the things I remember uh, one of my, uh, I think the fourth pharmacy that I managed, I had a, a competitor literally in my parking lot. So we were a big grocery store chain and one of the smaller box chains were legit like in our parking lot taking prescriptions left and right when I first got there and over time as I built relationships with folks in that community many people you know that were at going to that other pharmacy started knowing because they all were you know they all knew each other it's a small enough community like hey Joey the pharmacist at you know Kroger uh, was you know we'll do this this and this and then really takes care of you and yada 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 and and that sort of relationship component um help market ourselves without having more commercials or billboards or whatever it's just uh, word of mouth marketing now let's walk through an example that i see with pharmacies that uh, i think creates a lot of problems or it's just a, a common common situation that happens that may just be around managing expectations so some pharmacies are open 24 hours a day but most have a fixed schedule, you know, maybe 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. or 9 a.m. to 9 9 p.m., something like that. Uh, Some, you know, a lot of independent pharmacies may even be like 9 a.m. to 5 or 6 p.m. One of the challenges we have is that the expectations around closing time are very different for, for employees as they would be compared to customers. So employees want to go home while customers still expect great service. Remember, customers have that desired level of service and employees, when they see that closing time coming around, they're thinking, hey, I get to go home, right? So I'm going to talk about three major problems with closing times in in this example. One's an unclear definition. Two is a lack of employee training. And the third is often a lack of service level enforcement at closing time. And let's kind of go through each of these. So first, the definition of closing time, often we, you know, we see that 9 p.m. is on the door, you know, it says we close at 9, right? And then we, as managers, will sometimes schedule our employees up until 9 p.m. and, and they're ready to go home at 9. So when a customer brings in a prescription at 8.55, they expect the same level of service as if it were 7 p.m., right? Like they don't see 8.55 as being any different than 7 p.m. Like they're, they made it before it closed. Is 9 p.m., as in terms of a closing time, is that the last time of entry or is that the time that everyone must be out, right? I've been to a few restaurants where the closing time 
may be on the door at 11 p.m., but they'll say, you know, at 10 o'clock or 1030 that they, you know, the kitchen's closed, right? So there's a bit of a, you know, some, some places will be very clear and say, hey, we'll let you in, but just know we're, you know, we close at this time and by close, everyone's out at that time. I think sometimes in pharmacy, we're not as clear. And so there's that kind of this, um, ambiguity and that causes stress both for employees and the customers. So you got that person come in at 855. How many of you who've worked in a pharmacy have felt that like, oh, I can't believe there's someone rolling in at 855 and they want five prescriptions and a flu shot and counseling or whatever, you know, and then you're rolling your eyes, you're upset. You're like, oh, now I'm going to be late. You maybe were making plans to go see a movie at 930 and now that ain't happening, right? So you know, that's one of the issues when we think about what's the definition of closing time. And what about training? Training around the closing time practices. So if say that 9 p.m. is that time that we're closing and what does that mean for our pharmacists and technicians that are at the store? Often we have a list of chores or nightly duties that are typically done before we can close up. How do we also provide high quality customer service in addition to finishing those nightly chores. I mean, it's really a challenge. You know, I've seen a lot of places where, uh, you know, the technicians are pulling all the trash out of the trash bins and everything. Oh, and then, you know, then they're going to stop midway of pulling out the trash to like start typing in a prescription. And anyway, you can kind of see just kind of juggling these chores uh, with, with providing high quality service. So this extra stress the employee feels stressed because they're not getting their nightly duties done, and the customer is feeling rushed because they're seeing the they're seeing the technician or the pharmacist do two or three things. Oh, while they're ringing up the customer, you're just kind of like, you know, shooing them out the door. And finally, the service level enforcement at closing time. You know, the manager may not be available or maybe is busy running nightly reports or doing something else. Sometimes the unsupervised employees at closing uh, may be may, may lead to inconsistent service. And, and often you may even see uh, pharmacists utilizing part time help around closing time uh, when maybe the more experienced technicians who have more seniority, maybe they're scheduled earlier in the day from, you know, 8 a.m. to 9, you know, to 5 p.m. or something. So and that was really common where I worked is that often your you know college students, uh, part-time help, they often would pick up 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., little five-hour shifts here and there. So your closing staff would often be very different than your uh, morning staff. Well, from the customer standpoint, they want to see excellent service no matter when you're there. You know, again, that's part of your brand. Like, what, it, what do you want to provide from your pharmacy. And so making sure that the employees across the board are, you know, equally trained and able to provide, you know, rock star service. All right, let's pause for a little bit of active learning and, and, and then wrap up. So what do you call that zone between the customer's expectation of adequate and desired service? Is it the danger zone, the zone of tolerance, or the zone of adequacy? All right, if you were paying attention, it was the zone of tolerance. That's that point between uh, an adequate service level expectation and a desired service level expectation. That concludes our lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Any questions uh, that could be good for open public discussion and debate, feel free to engage on Twitter. And then if you're uh, not in the course and, and you know wanted to comment on this uh, video, feel free to leave a comment down below. And anything that's uh, of value, I might share with our students as well. Take care.